Hi everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the channel and I am here for a list video for you guys. Now for this list video, I'll be going over some bands that I was once a fan of, but just lost interest in. Now, if you are still a fan of any of these bands, that's okay. Um, this is just my opinion on these bands nowadays. And, you know, these are bands that have just personally have fallen off for me. So with that being said, let's go ahead and begin. And we're going to begin with the band, Nothing More. The thing is with this band, my fandom didn't really last that long with this band. Uh, I got into them in 2017, and I'd say that my fandom really only lasted about five or six months, maybe even less than that. <laughs> I don't know, but I just know it didn't really last that long. And, um, you know, 2017 was kind of an interesting time for me musically because I was kind of going through this thing where, you know, I was heavily into mellow death, but at the same time I was checking out, you know, more bands in modern hard rock, you know? So yeah, and the reason that I was, ch you know, checking out a lot of these bands in modern rock was because of some of my viewers at the time. A lot of my viewers, you know, a few years ago wanted me to check out these, you know, uh, hard rock bands. And, you know, I thought, you know what, I can, you know, maybe try to relive these days, relive, you know, 2011, 2012, back when I was a big fan of this style of music, this hard rock, edgier style of rock type of music. So, you know, that's something that I was like, you know, I can probably really dig it. But yeah, and I will admit, I did like nothing more for a bit. And obviously, they've really dropped off for me. Not really a band that was, I guess, really meant to stay in my musical journey. And honestly, for good reason. The thing is, with nothing more, there's just nothing really special about their music. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I wanted to listen to hard rock or modern hard rock, which isn't very often, mind you, I would listen to bands like Breaking Benjamin or Red or Shinedown or Three Days Grace. I mean, nothing more compared to those bands. Not even comparable. Uh, just kind of a mediocre hard rock band. Like, there's nothing really special about their music, if you ask me. Uh, I just think that there's better in this genre, personally. But again, they're not a terrible band, but I don't know. They just don't really do much for me. I just think that there's way better music out there. And that's kind of my attitude towards nothing more. There's just better music out there. So following that up, we got Star Set. Now, Star Set, I do like a little bit more than nothing more. Um, now, Star Set, again, similar story. I got into them in 2017. Uh, but my fandom with them did last longer. Uh, not much longer, but, you know, a little bit longer. Uh, you know, I, I really dig Star Set whenever I first got into them in 2017, back when their second album, Vessels, came out. Now, I remember some people being kind of surprised at the time that I didn't get into Star Set since the beginning, or at least whenever they released their debut record, which was Transmissions. But the reason that I didn't get into Star Set back when they released their first album is because, well, for one, I didn't even know who Star Set was back then. And secondly, whenever Star Set was, you know, starting to release music, this was at a point where I was starting to get into metalcore and just started to get into music that was a little heavier. Like, I didn't really, I, I started losing interest at this point in checking out, you know, more bands that were in hard rock. Obviously, uh, the next time that that would happen would be 2017, or actually maybe even 2016 to an extent, you know, but in 2016, I was, you know, actually, believe it or not, exploring more bands in Christian rock, uh, such as bands like The Cypher Down, which ended up kind of being a failure for me, but I did like one song from them. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's kind of the deal with um, why I didn't get into Star Set sooner, of course. But, uh, you know, I really, at the time in 2017, I really liked, you know, the electronics that they did in some of their songs. Now, believe it or not, the one thing that got me into the band is actually the thing that kind of turns me off from the band these days. 
is the fact that I think their music is just a little too overproduced. Now, I know that they have a cool sound to them, you know, with incorporating hard rock with, with electronics, but I feel like when bands, you know, try to come off as sounding, like, too cool, per se, like, if bands, like, have this cool sound, it kind of comes off as kind of cliche in a way. Like, kind of comes off as, like, well, it's, there's nothing really challenging about me getting into this band. You know, they have a cool sound, and but that's that's the problem, is that they do have a cool sound. Like, like I want to challenge myself to like their music. I, I don't want, like, you know, to be, like, a, you know, first uh, fan at first listen or whatever, you know? Like, and I think that's a struggle that a lot of people have. A lot of people don't want to challenge themselves when it comes to certain bands. But I do think Star Set Sound is overall kind of overproduced and, you know, and the vocals are something that kind of turns me off from Star Set as well. Now, I know some people do like Dustin Bates' vocals, but honestly, if you think about it, his vocals are not really that much different from your usual boy band vocals. But yeah, there's uh, a few things that kind of don't do it for me when it comes to Star Set. So the next band up, we got Soil Work. Um, now keep in mind with this list, um, even though that these bands uh, fell off for me or don't interest me as much these days, that isn't to say that I think that these are bad bands or I won't return to anything from these bands. Occasionally, I'll return to a few songs from some of these bands, not all of them, but it's not very often, of course. But with Soil Work, I don't think that they're a bad band. They were the first Mellow Death band that I got into. And, you know, like with Star Set, the thing that got me into Soil Work is actually the thing these days that I just don't really find that appealing anymore. Like, the fascination isn't there. And the thing that really got me into Soil Work was the vocals. Uh, I thought Bjorn's vocals were just amazing whenever I first listened to them in 2016, whenever I got into Soil Work. Um... But I'm not too thrilled about this particular vocal style these days. You know, this kind of deep register that bands like Soil Work have, you know? Um, now, I, I do make some exceptions, but I don't know. With Soil Work, it just doesn't really do much for me. Um, and not to mention the way uh, Bjorn screams, you know, when he's, you know, delivering the scream vocals in Soil Work is something that really kind of irritates me these days because it does sound like he's more so shouting more so than like actually using scream vocals you know what I'm saying and it also makes it really hard to even call this band a mellow death band now I know some people have said well that's because it's modern mellow death that's just what mellow death is today it may not sound like 90s mellow death but you know this is just what mellow death is today well here's one thing I have to tell you that I don't care if it is today's Mellow Death or whatever. I'm not a fan of it. If this is the way today's Mellow Death is, then I guess I'm just not a fan of today's Mellow Death. That's all there is to it. And to be honest, In Flames is really the only Mellow Death band that I'm into anymore. The only band in the genre that really does it for me. Of course, they're a pioneer and you can't go wrong with them. So yeah. Soil Work, once again, not a bad band. I think they do have some good songs you know, that I might return to on occasion, but they just don't do it for me as much these days. So the next band up, we got Insomnium. Now, Insomnium I got into in 2017. Now, like I said, in 2017, this was a kind of funny time for my musical journey. Um, probably one of the weirdest years for me musically since, you know, I was you know, trying to get into hard rock and mellow death at the same time, you know, kind of a weird combination, I know, but, um, whenever I got into Insomnium in 2017, um, I thought that they could be a contender for a favorite band of mine, but obviously these days, no, they're not a favorite band, uh, and this is also when I considered mellow death, like, the best subgenre of metal, you know, I put it at the top, at my number one, Nowadays, I wouldn't even put it in the top five, of course. Um, I know that kind of disappointed a lot of my viewers whenever, you know, Mellow Death didn't really do much for me these last few years, but it is what it is. 
The thing is with Insomnium, I just think that their music is kind of boring. I know that might trigger some people, but, you know. Their music is very atmospheric and very calm sounding, but it's also heavy. Like, while I think the music is very, like, kind of calm in a way, it's also pretty heavy, you know? It, it's kind of hard to explain. Like, if, you, if you've if you listened to Insomnium, you kind of know what I'm talking about. I don't know, that kind of, you know atmospheric, you know, this adventurous sounding metal does not really do it for me. Very foreign sounding metal, that just doesn't really do it for me, you know. Not a bad band, but I don't know, I'm just not too fond of that particular style of metal. I prefer a little more rawness to my metal, you know. Um, but that's all there is to it. That's Insomnium. I had to put it on the list. So... Next up, we got Winter Sun. Kind of a similar idea, very adventurous sounding metal. Um, the thing is, um, I got into these guys in 2017 as well. Again, another band that's fallen off for me. Uh, some of their songs have atmosphere, something that I'm, I used to really like about, you know, metal bands. I used to love metal bands that used atmosphere and, you know, had these adventurous uh sounding music and obviously not you know too big of a fan of that like I used to again not terrible you know I like these ideas but I just don't really see the fascination for them um Winter Sun is a band that I I, I think I like even less than Insomnium to be honest um Winter Sun's music is very medieval sounding, like a lot of, they, they use like sometimes choruses that have like these Viking chants, like um, the chorus to The Forest That Weeps, if I'm thinking of the song name correctly, uh, that the chorus of that song is very uh, Viking sounding for sure, very medieval sounding. Uh, I know Winter Sun is like a band that is power metal that combines mellow death and stuff and they only have three albums believe it or not and they've been out since the early 2000s yeah they have definitely some time gaps in between their albums but yeah so the replay value you can tell is probably something that lacks as well but yeah winter sun they had to make the list so the next band up which is probably the most surprising one on this list some of you might be very very shocked that I even have this, this band on the list, because I think that there's some people that think that I'm still a big fan of this band. And that is the band August Burns Red. Whoa, what? Yeah, you heard me right. I, I know, some of you are probably very surprised. Um, but I think it's no secret at this point that August Burns Red is a band that has kind of dropped off for me. And it was kind of slowly getting to that point, you know. Um... I got into them in 2015, back, you know, when I was really heavily into metalcore. Um, and I think, I, I do think that August Burns Red is still probably the best band on this list. Like, I like if I were to pick the band on this list that I would uh, be the most fan of, or, the you know, have the most fandom towards, it would be August Burns Red. So I don't think that they're a bad band. Technically a good band, but the thing is with August Burns Red for me these days is their music is very samey. Uh, there's not a whole lot of diversity to their music, and that's actually one of the reasons why I haven't even checked out their most recent release, Guardians, yet. Because I already know what, I, what to expect when I go into that album. It's just going to be another August Burns Red album. That, that was my attitude whenever I heard that Guardians was coming out. Like, I, I just heard it's just going to be another August Burns Red album, basically. Yeah, the diversity thing, it, it's definitely lacking. And the fact that, you know, they not only lack diversity, but, you know, only use scream vocals, uh, something that can be, be kind of irritating at, a, at times. You know, because I do prefer bands that sing more so than scream. Now, I still do like bands that scream, but, you know, I can only take so much of it these days. I don't know. I guess I'm just getting older, you know. <laughs> But, again, August Burns Red, technically a good band, but, I don't know, the, the diversity is lacking, for sure. And some, and they can be edgy at times. 
Now, they're not as edgy as bands like, say, Asking Alexandria or anything, but it's something that I feel like a lot of today's metal kind of struggles with, is this, with the edginess, you know? Now, again, August Burns Red, they don't struggle with that too much, but it's something that does occur in some songs, especially in their more later material. But August Burns Red definitely had to make the list. So the last band on this list, we got Dead by April. Now, this band I still think is kind of a guilty pleasure. Again, I'll return to a few songs for nostalgia's sake. But now you want to talk about bands that have boy band sounding vocals. Dead by April. Like, if you're looking for bands that are in metalcore that combine boy bands elements, Dead by April is the band for you. I'll just say that. Um, this is a band that only has four albums. And I don't even know what's going on. Like, I know it's been a few years since they came out with an album, so I don't know if they're going to come out with another album. I th I know that this band really struggles in terms of lineup changes. I mean, this, I don't know any band that has more lineup changes than Dead by April. It's awfully ridiculous. Like, I mean, I know that they have a new Scream vocalist now, I think. Uh, I know Jimmy Strimmel recently left the band again for, like, what, the third or like the third time already it's just really silly but yeah dead by april their music is overproduced and not exactly the most metal sounding band you know uh but again i'll return to a few songs for nostalgia but i'll tell you what man if i just discovered these guys this year i would not be a fan of them they would be an immediate turn off for me but I really like these guys, you know, back when I was in my late teen years, I guess. So I used to like these guys, believe it or not. So Dead by April, they had to make the list. Well, there you have it, guys. That is a list of bands that I have lost interest in. Feel free to let me know in the comments uh, what you think of these bands and what are some bands that you have used to liked but lost interest in. Feel free to let me know in the comments. So with that being said, thanks for watching. Have a nice day and take care.